Uh, what I'm going to do is introduce you to the next generation of quad-core technology for the desktop space. A little bit about the architecture of that technology, the new processor family we're going to be introducing as a result of it, and then I'm going to end by showing you a demo of uh, the uh, highest end enthusiast class octa-core platform all on AMD. Uh, true quad-core, the cores are on die. They communicate on die. They do not have to go through a front side bus uh, bottleneck architecture in which to communicate. With our integrated memory controller, which many of you are familiar with, uh, cores can scale, communicate seamlessly, and be optimized for memory and I.O. as a result of that. So with uh, integrated memory controller, the hypertransport links, you can scale and optimize on uh, cores as you grow those cores better than a, a, than a bottleneck or a front side bus type architecture. As I said, this becomes even more prevalent as we go to multiple cores. So with this new technology, we're going to be introducing a new family of processors called AMD Phenom. They're going to be able to be in both dual core, quad core, and various socket uh, configurations that I'll talk to you in a few minutes. And the beauty of these it is both in its terms of powerful, which is what true quad core brings, and that is uh, increased memory bandwidth, faster response times, takes advantage of all the media rich environments that we've been talking about today, 3D, animation, games, video encoding, uh, decoding uh, technology, as well as with everything with AMD, they're energy efficient. So they're optimized for efficient system resources. Uh, we talked about true quad core, Another feature is shared L3 cache. Unlike our current architecture, which has L1, L2 dedicated by core, the L3 cache is shared and it serves, if you will, as a fat pipeline. So each of the cores can access simultaneously when they need it to optimize for memory and I.O. Nothing dedicated to cores. Through the integrated memory controller, they have that simultaneous ac access to the shared L3 cache. This simply translate and it translates into faster faster bandwidth, faster response time, faster performance. That's what L3 shared cache gives. Current uh, architecture or infrastructure is AM2 socket. The Phenom processors will be compatible in that architecture today, uh, infrastructure AM2. It will also fit in the AM2 plus infrastructure. So it will be back, backwards and forwards compatible in the package. And what that means is this is a seamless upgrade path for our customers. So our OEMs and system builders can decide to move to the enhanced uh, package when they want to and when they're ready to do that for their customers. So when we uh, begin shipping, the AMD Phenom processors will be the second half of 07. Customers who want to take that and put it into the enhanced AM2 Plus package can do that. Those that don't want to change their infrastructure and want to put those new processors in AM2 current infrastructure, they can do that as well. Backwards and forwards compatibility for seamless upgrade. Um, another feature will be 128-bit floating point unit. That's particularly uh, appropriate and uh, advantageous for those that are doing uh, digital media content creation. We've talked a lot about that and these prosumers and high-end enthusiasts who are doing that at home. That would be advantage to that. There's also some video audio software that takes advantage of that increased floating point unit. AMD Sempron Processors are single core processors. The Athlon X2 will serve, if you will, as the fighter brand for dual core. Phenom will also be available in dual core, and that's in recognition of, while we talk a lot today, and appropriately so, about the high end enthusiast market, quad core, we're going to show you an octa core platform. Dual core will still be by far the most prevalent technology, at least for the foreseeable future. So, Phenom X2 will offer a step up in increased performance off of our current Athlon X2 processors. Phenom X4 will be quad core, again with shared L3 cache, 128-bit floating point unit that we talked about, and will also be available in the enhanced uh, package AM2+. Phenom FX will be available in a variety of different socket choices. We will offer Phenom FX in AM2+, so for those system builders, and uh, OEMs who want to have one lineup of a good, better, best, if you will, uh, a dual core, a quad core, as well as then Phenom FX, they can do that all in the same AM2 Plus infrastructure. Those that want to differentiate even more than that 
and want to offer the um, highest end enthusiast class platform can go to the dual socket direct connect architecture. Fascinating. This is the first all AMD Silicon Next Generation 8-core enthusiast platform. You have it in the back, and we're going to show a demo running this. This is the Phenom 2 Phenom Quad Cores in an octa-core platform running the ATI Radeon HD2900 XT Next Generation graphics. It's also running our 790 Next Generation chipset, which will be available the second half of the year. And last but not least, it's also running codename Wahoo, which is a next generation board design. And we've got here uh, a rendering that's happening real time. And Cinebench is measuring the CPU performance of that. And you can see all eight cores being utilized. Um, and then, of course, it, it renders down and renders back up. And the one piece that may not be uh, apparent to you that I want to make sure that you understand is being able to fully load all the cores and then power them down and fully load them again shows real good stability in the silicon. It's the next stage in the AMD platform for the enthusiasts and takes us to a new integration and optimization of cross AMD platforms for the desktop space. Phenom yeah. is going to be using the new core technology. We'll have the shared L3 cache and the 128-bit floating point unit. It'll also be available in the uh, enhanced infrastructure. We will offer um, we'll have a 1207 socket We'll have a 12 second socket that's upgradable to the current processors can put in that socket. Absolutely. So we kept the Rev F mm -hmm. piece. As long as you're in Rev F, you yep. can go backwards and forwards. Yep. And that's, um, you know, there's a lot around this issue about upgradability. People say, well, nobody really upgrades. Well, the actual the truth is lots of people upgrade. It just depends on who you are. So lots of enthusiasts love to upgrade. Um, and they buy motherboards and they upgrade them as quickly as they can. They certainly upgrade their graphics the moment they can get the next graphics card. And by the way, also in the professional environments, now some industries tend to just buy more servers or buy more desktops as demand calls, but I, I have seen, uh, I was actually at a company this week who's going through a process on RevF of moving all their, uh, their single cores over to dual cores. Because that was, a, that was a, 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 an IT management decision they had made and planned for in advance. We think this the fact that we're giving socket future protection is a very big value to, to a number of parts within the marketplace, especially the enthusiasts who are buying systems for their own personal use. What often happens in our industry is that the gaming consumers are the ones who, who jump on this technology the soonest. Um, definitely for there are multiple applications for quad core and desktop throughout both the enterprise as well as in other consumer spaces. I'm not sure about notebook. There's, it's an interesting debate of whether the power required to run for cores is going to be balanced with the need for battery life. I think there's a, a real issue around for yourself running a notebook in front of me. You know, at what point is speed and power in that, in that management or relationship? And I'll tell you where I think that answer is. That answer is is that the you have to start thinking of the form factor of a notebook as being transportable at the gaming level versus versus thin and light. And I have a term that I use a lot around the company that we need to start to think about not just thin and light notebooks, but thick and rich notebooks. And it's in the thick and rich market that we start to see people like Dell with the XPS models and others are starting to come out. And what's interesting about that is that those are coming out, yes, online and yes, through normal enthusiast purchasing models like e but they're also showing up in retail stores around the world.